life goes on And so do we Just how we do it is no mystery Sometimes the answer can be hard to find That's something I will never be I'm always here for anything that you need Rain or shine, I'll be the one To share it all as life goes on We share it all as life goes on Still be morning in Hawaii, but here on the mainland, it is well into the workday. Laverne, it is 8.02. Whatever happened to Good Morning Doctor? You want Good Morning Doctor, you show up at 7.55. <laughs> now get a move on. Nick's Ball Club is back in town, and he is taking me out to dinner. Oh, special occasion. You want small talk? You show up at 7.55. <laughs> Harry, we don't have an appointment, but... No, sure, surely. Go on in. Let's go. Thanks. Um, she woke up this morning and said she felt too sick to go to school. She had 104 temperature. 104? Let's take a look here. Uh, uh, Shirley, can I just have a minute along with Lori, please? Oh, sure. <laughs> 104, huh? That can only be thermometer on the light bulb. Listen, buddy to buddy, Doc. I need a week off from school. Lori, unless you've got reserve duty, I can't do that. Why not? Last year you got me at a gym for two weeks. That was for womanhood. This is for... Freshman Fandango. What is that, a skin thing? It's a big dance Friday and nobody's asked me yet. I just don't want to have to go through another week of... Who asked you to the dance, Lori? Oh, you poor unpopular thing. Yes. And I swear, I'm gonna kill the next person who tells me that no one asked Morgan Fairchild to a senior prom. I heard that one, huh? All right. Well, listen, honey, maybe the boys are just shy. Why don't you ask somebody to the dance? Doc, think about it. You're looking at the great personality poster child here. Would you go to a dance with me if I asked you? Are you kidding? Absolutely, in a minute. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Hey, listen, trust me. I treat half your football team. I know what the 14-year-old boy is looking for, and honey, you've got it. You think so? Of course. Would I lie to you? I guess not. Okay, I'll try it. Just for future reference, if I came in here with runny nose, red, watery eyes... Sliced onion. <laughs> Seven fifty-five, and I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Laverne. Laverne. Oh, oh, you. Let's get to work. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, 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 wait a minute. What? Wait, you slept here last night? None of your business. Laverne, I'm not letting you out of this room until you tell me what's going on. Okay. Nick and I had a fight during our dinner last night, and I walked out on him. Ah, Laverne. You better take back those hands, or you'll have to learn to feed yourself with your feet. <laughs> Laverne, come on. This is a major thing here. Please, it's you and your husband. This is let me help. Come and talk to me about this. No, I do not care to stand here in my bedclothes discussing my marital problems with the boss man. Laverne, I'm not just the boss man. I'm the friend man. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Come on, you... Hey, look, you need some place to stay till this blows over. Stay with us. I don't know. The exam room sure is closer to where I work. Laverne, I insist. Okay. But you have to promise you will not try to talk to me about Nick. I really don't want to talk about that. Promise not a word. And this could be fun. You know, we could carpool. Good idea. I hit the road at a quarter of six. Perfect. You circle the block until 7.30, then pick me up. What's all that? 
that man trouble food is for Laverne. Daddy called and said she's going to be staying here for a while. Laverne's gonna stay here? That's so neat! It is not neat. She and her husband are fighting, and I'm going to help her through it. She can benefit from hearing of my experiences, all the anguish, pain, and grief I've suffered at the hands of men. That should pick her up. Come on, Dreyfus, move! Come on, go! Run! Barbara Carroll, somebody, please. Coming, Daddy. Thanks, dear. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Laverne. Hi there. Hi, honey. Uh, Laverne's going to stay with us for I know, Daddy. I'm sorry, Laverne. Oh, it's awful sweet, huh? But Nick and I have had these squabbles before, and I always end up going back home after he's apologized for a few days. We just have to go through the rituals all. Laverne. They're there now. <laughs> Let it all out. What did Nick do to you? No, 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 no. Rule number one for Laverne's stay is no prying. She doesn't want to talk about it, and we will respect that. I'm going to take her luggage up to Emily's room. So, Laverne, I guess you know that I myself have had serious marital difficulties. Is that a Claude Osteen signature model glove? Yeah, want to see it? Anyway, Gary, that was my husband. He had this thing for other women. Nick uses the Hank Aaron, but it doesn't have these pocket tethers. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is applicable to your situation. I bet my med, it's a Joe Morgan. With the padded thumb? Oh, yeah. But not with the damn glove. <laughs> okay. I'll see you later. I gotta go to practice anyway. Oh, have fun. And remember, if the ball beats you home, come in with your spikes high. <laughs> Now that she's gone, let's talk. Okay. What kind of glove you got? No, Laverne. You know, I mean about what happened with Laid off the couch. I'm sorry. I am just a guest here, and I should put on my party manners. Well, while you're doing that, I'll get the man trouble food. Don't even think of being miserable till I get back. Hi, uh, uh, Laverne, I hope Carol wasn't prying. Oh, not at all. Oh, oh. All right, come on, let's go. Drive. Hey. Come on, master's voice, Drive. You sure he's your dog? Dreyfus, move. You sure he's breathing? Oh, hi, Charlie. You remember Laverne, don't you? Yeah, maybe. Not now. Hungry. Oh, that's my neighbor, Charlie. Charlie, don't touch those muffins. Charlie, you put those back. Charlie! Not now. Can't talk. Eating. <laughs> you allow him to run roughshod over you like that in your own house? Why, somebody ought to take that man aside that... I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just a guest. Laverne, there are too many distractions here. What say you and I go somewhere where we can talk? Thank you. I'm just going to wait for Nick to come a-crawling over here on his belly, a-wooing and a-groveling and a-begging me to come back home. Oh, Laverne, you poor misguided thing. <laughs> Let me tell you about men. They never admit they're wrong. They never apologize. And believe me, they... That'd be Nick out front trying to woo me back with our song. I don't believe it. He's got sheet music and a metronome. Silly, broken-hearted boo. <laughs> but if he thinks he's gonna win me back with an instrumental now, he's got another thinker coming. Well, that takes care of all of Nick's flowers in the living room. And Laverne said it was okay to set those lovebirds free. This is disgusting. For the past two days, Nick has been pouring his heart out. Flowers, candy, singing telegrams. Last night, he hit three home runs for her and then recited Elizabeth Barrett Browning on the post-game show. <laughs> My God, if she doesn't go back to him soon, I will. Well, honey, the man is in love. What's in the little box? Who knows? Probably an ear. <laughs> Daddy, please talk to her. What? Daddy, Laverne has got to go.
Why? I should have never told her I played softball. Now she's acting like some crazed manager. She kept me up on my practicing fundamentals. Well, Tony, she's going through a very difficult time. That's easy for you to say. You didn't spend half the night hook sliding into the dinette set. <laughs> I try to tell her I only play softball on the weekends for fun. What did she say? Bad attitude. Drop and give me 50. <laughs> Morning, all looks like rain. Laverne, how did you do that? Click commands. Graphics responds to a series of clicks, is all. Anybody else want anything? you run upstairs and put you on a smock now i've got some up there to salvage that hair color yarn i know you're going for red but what you got there is more of a burnt sienna uh, uh laverne dear um can we have a little talk oh can't it wait because uh, after i do carol's hair i gotta go upstairs and pack what well nick's efforts haven't fallen on deaf ears i can't stay mad at him forever so tonight when he comes a wooing i'm a going home with him oh really that's great yeah this is the third night so he'll be opening with honka honka burning love <laughs> i'll be out that door before he hits his second honka <laughs> it's a shame really i was just starting to get your home life in order well. <laughs> Morning, may I come in? Here you go, Carol. Sweets for the sweet. Barbara? Halston. Harry, your lawnmower is back in your garage with a brand new blade, and here's a little something for your dinner. Save the bone for the doggy. Oh, and Mrs. Todd, this is a bad time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Laverne? Oh. Well, 11.30, time for bed. Laverne, I'm sure something happened to hold Nick up. Oh, no matter. His loss. Well, we got work in the morning, you know. Let's get a good night's sleep. We got back-to-back -back hyperactives from 10 to 11. Laverne, if you want to talk, you don't want to talk. What you need is a nice, big, left-alone kind of thing. Good night, doctor. Good night, Laverne. For Nick, I've been too busy. You see this new shipment of tongue depressors? I've been spending all morning counting them, and it was all wrong. There weren't a thousand. There were only 998. <laughs> Laverne, this is strange. What's going on? Well, it just occurred to me that I could be running this office in a more efficient manner. I don't think so. <laughs> Laverne, we need to talk. Okay. You got 10 seconds. Go. <laughs> Well, Laverne, I just think that this whole thing with you and Nick... Five seconds. ...is upsetting him, what do you think? If you only take a moment... I'd hit to... those words in conclusion. Laverne! Whoop, time's up, Lori Kincaid. Room one. <laughs> Hi, Doc. I just dropped in to tell you I followed your advice about taking the initiative and asking Guy to the dance. Oh, so I'm going. Great! Who are you taking? Well, Monday, I figured I'd go for broke and ask Scott Nethery. Scott Nethery, the quarterback? He laughed. Kind of an evil laugh. So, uh, who are you going with? I'm going with you. Who, me? You? That you? Who, me? My mom and I will pick you up around eight-ish. Uh, honey, I can't take you to this dance. Dr. Weston, you said that if I were to ask you to the dance, you'd say yes in a minute, remember? Yeah, but that was hypothetical. I mean, I'm old enough to be your doctor. Well, I don't blame you. Nobody else wanted to go with me, either. Lori, hey, I would love to go with you. Really, I had some other plans, but I can change them. You sure? Sweetheart, I would be delighted. Great, great. This is so 
great. I'm probably the only girl in the whole ninth grade who's bringing a doctor to the dance. And Carly Townsend thinks she's hot snot because she's bringing a senior. This is so great. You know what would be, like, the best? Would be if you and Scott Nethery were to get into a fight over me in the parking lot. <laughs> of course, just your taking me to the dance is really <laughs> good enough. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> Laverne has really flipped her lid. Look at this. She's made strawberry preserves, blackberry preserves, apricot preserves. Did you see the label? With a name like Laverne, it's got to be good. <laughs> what are we going to do? I don't know. We can't talk to her. Daddy will have to be our voice of reason. Huh? What do you say? Does this say freshman fandango? <laughs> If memory serves me correctly, this is what kids wear to the school dance. Yeah, so? So little Lori Kincaid couldn't get a date for the dance, I told her. I'd take her. Oh, that is so sweet, Daddy. Yeah. What is all this, a good-looking jelly salesman? It's Laverne. She's been making preserves like a woman possessed. Daddy, she canned everything that wasn't pinned down. Well, I'm glad I set those lovebirds free. I tell you, that this thing with Nick has thrown her for a loop. Here we go! More fruits and sugar! Oh, you're here? Great. We need canners. Better roll up those French cuffs. Could be an all lighter Uh, excuse, Oliver, excuse me, that uh, would be my date. Come on, drive us move. <laughs> Laverne! <laughs> well, Laurie, you look gorgeous. I'm gonna be the luckiest guy on the dance floor. Doc, we gotta talk. Why? What's what's up? Dr. Weston, this is Billy Coder. Hi. Nice tux. <laughs> Left my size. Yeah, me too. Doc, Billy wants to take me to the dance. He was too embarrassed to ask me until today. It's my height. I haven't had my growth spurt yet. <laughs> Would you mind terribly if I went with Billy instead? Well. I uh, hope this doesn't come to blows, Doctor Weston. I, I heard at school that you'll be gunning for Scott Nethery after the dance. <laughs> Crazy, crazy rumor mill. <laughs> uh, come on, Lori. Let's go. Uh, nice to meet you, Dr. Weston. Pleasure. Nice meeting you, too. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come on. Have a lovely evening. Thanks, Doc. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'll find something to do. All right. I'm sure somewhere there's a Cuban band in need of a leader. All right. Oh, Doctor, I was, I was just about to turn in. Well, you know, I thought that makes sense. You know, we're both up that. Maybe we could talk about it. I don't it. want to talk about it. Okay, dear. I just thought I'd ask. Sorry. Night, dear. Good night, doctor. Why do you think Nick stopped coming? You do want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know why he stopped coming. Do you think he'll come back? I don't know. Want to know what our fight was about? Only if you're comfortable talking about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. It was our anniversary. Nick took me to my favorite restaurant for dinner. Right before dessert, he took my hand and told me what he got me. Tenth wedding anniversary, and he got me a bass boat. Ah, <laughs> uh, Laverne, I'm sorry. Why? It's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> Oh, of course. 10th anniversary is uh, fishing craft. <laughs> Problem is, I 
problem is he wanted to name it the Miss Dorothula. Ooh, uh, ugly name. His mama's name. For a boat, an ugly name. For a parent. I'll just listen to you talk for a while. Well, we went back and forth on it for a while, and when I insisted that boat be named after me, Nick called me something still rings in my ears. He called me pushy. <laughs> Actually, he called me a little pushy, but allow me the luxury of revisionist memory. Can you believe it? He called me pushy. Well... Well, what? Well, I mean, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, Laverne, there are certain times when you can be... <laughs> the tiniest bit pushy. We might as well just say pushy, because that's how I remember it a couple of days from now anyhow. Okay. Well, this hurts. I never intended to come across as pushy. See, nobody knows this about me. But it's always been real important that I be in complete control of every part of my life. So this loosey-goosey thing you do is just an act? Exactly. Truth is, I've never been so scared of anything as I am that maybe Nick's never going to come back, and I just need so badly to talk to somebody about it. Wish it could be me. Can't be you. <laughs> And for the first time in my life, I'm alone, and I just don't know what to do. I tried to go the obvious route. I tried to go preserves. <laughs> and now I've lost him. Oh, Laverne, you haven't lost him. Nick probably wants nothing more than for you to just come home. Well, then why isn't he out there right now trying to woo me back? Well, hell, dear, I mean, he gave it his best shot. Maybe it's your turn to court him. I do a mean rendition of Proud Murray. I bet he'd love to hear it. Well, if I thought that might be true, I'd be home in a minute. Might be. I'm out of here. Doctor. Hmm? Thanks for the talk. Never happened. Damn straight it never happened. Mm. <laughs>